Welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beat Farmin' Mitch. Oh, you know it's gonna be a good day when we got the Stanley full of coffee. And there's still quite a bit left in there. I've had a few cups out here already. But anyway, good to see ya. Um, today, we have another fun one ahead of us. We are out in the band sprayer. And this tool is 24 rows wide. It's kind of a neat tool. The reason it's called a band sprayer is because there's a bunch of musical instruments all over this thing. And they work together as one band. No, I'm just kidding. It sprays bands over the rows. You can see behind me, those are sugar beet rows. This is the back, facing backwards. Uh, but we're spraying just a band, a nine inch band, over each row. So we're not spraying the dirt in the middle, we're just spraying right over the beets. And we're putting down fungicide, which that helps with various diseases, root diseases, things like that. Rhizoctonia, Aphenomyces, Fusarium, those are kind of the big sugar beet root diseases. There's another one called Crazy Root. Rhizomania, that's what that's called, or crazy red. But most of the varieties like are bred so that they don't, that, that's not even really hardly an issue anymore. It's a thing, but it doesn't really ever happen much with the good varieties we got nowadays. So thank the Lord for agricultural advancements and technology and making the most of the tools we got. So very thankful for that. And this, stuff, this stuff's like milk almost. It's like a kind of a white thick liquid that just goes right over the beets and the goal is we want to get the crown of the sugar beets sprayed with this stuff and so the crown is just like that middle center point. Binkies up! You can really see the beet rows here. This is a really nice field. We've got a pretty good stand here. Like this is about as good as you can ask for with the cards we've been dealt. Uh, there's a couple places that are a little patchier. Like if you look here, it's a little darker colored and every once in a while you can kind of see like some skips in between the beet plants, which obviously you want them perfectly spaced. Every single beet comes up four and a half inches apart, but that just doesn't always happen. Um, it really depends on the conditions of the year and moisture and the soil and things like that. Um, so, but the overall, these look really nice here. It stands 220, you know, so that's that's about right. So, we're happy about that. And you know, there's a lot of beef areas in the area and in the Red River Valley this year that are really tough stands. Whether that was from wind, uh, not enough moisture, you name it. You know, there was quite a bit of things that played into that. Um, so we're thankful for that nonetheless. And so on here, I've got to do quite a bit of trimming. Um, the trim is on here. The GPS is very accurate, but like sometimes you can be like a little too close to the row or far an, an inch away, just kind of depending on the planters and things. And so it's really important I'm lined up. So I don't run the beats over and so that the band sprayer is directly over the rows. So that's kind of important. And so anyway, Let's take a peek at the band sprayer here. So this Puppies and Elmers, it's a Canadian company. Um, and so, oh, here's my sprayer control. I got 176 gallons. I can fit 500 or so gallons in here and that's enough to do about like 86 acres. So usually you can do a quarter, which is 160 acres, AKA a quarter section of land. 640 total is one mile by one mile. Half a mile by half a mile would be 160 acres, which would be a quarter of a full section, which is one mile by one mile. And so I can do one full quarter 
on two fills, which is really nice. So yeah, you can see the hoses there. That's where the chemicals going through. Um, stuff I'm watching here, there's a little gauge down here that shows my pressure. We're going at about six gallons an acre. So we want to make sure that's just a touch under 40 PSI. And then you can see these little uh, like bobber looking things swirling around in these milk tubes. And that is not hooked up to a dairy cow. No, that is hooked up to the tank. And those things spinning show that the, the nozzles aren't plugged. So those are really nice to have. I can watch those. Every once in a while I like to check it quick and make sure they're all spraying right and that they aren't plugged. Um, and if it is plugged, I got a little brush to clean those out. So when I turn around with this thing, there's quite a bit I have to do. I've got to shut the band sprayer off because you don't want overlap onto the headlands. And then we got to lift up the three point and then the wings on this thing. So there's, you got to have both hands available when you're turning around. drop it and turn on the sprayer and I can see two rows behind me that are spraying the rest of them are kind of hidden so that's handy to see that um, and I usually got a pretty good judgment by those uh, milk tubes I like to call them so we're in the case Magnum 180 CBT uh, this is a very good tractor you really don't need much horsepower for this kind of job right now we're running 1550 rpms um, it just doesn't take much to pull this thing so yeah the nice thing about the band sprayer is it just sprays in those bands so we actually save quite a bit of chemical by doing that there's not as much wasted fungicide in between the rows but it's just kind of right over the rows so it's efficient it does take more time than spraying like it's more labor intensive but you know it's um that's one but that's one pro about that so that's kind of nice Okay, so we're coming up on a patch of wild oats here. We sprayed it, so that's why it's brown, but you can see that there's like hardly any beets in there. So that is why weeds are an issue because they like to devastate the crops. So, I mean, that'll disappear and the beets will grow there, but they'll be a little bit delayed in that circle. Wild oats. One thing that's super satisfying about this, and I mean, you know, there's just something about being in the, the rows of crops that in the summer. That's just, it's so beautiful. You know, it really is so fun and satisfying to be out here. Uh, but one thing I really like, this thing's got ribbed tires on it. So they're just like, they're not treaded. They're just like have a rib in the middle. And if you look behind, right in the tire tracks, you can kind of see there's just like this satisfying tire mark. And it's just cool. I like it. It's the little things, you know. And so this is my first year ever band spraying. It's kind of a neat job. I don't think we did it last year. It was just too wet to get this thing out here. Um, so I think we just had to use our regular sprayers. Um, but yeah, first year doing this job. I always like learning how to do a new job. Um, that's always fun. You gotta be patient and humble because I don't know it all. And it's a constant learning and growing process. You know, that's something I've learned is as a farmer, you never have it all figured out. You're not going to time things perfectly, but you can always keep growing and trying your best um, to grow, you know? So that's something I appreciate. And you know, I find a lot of similarities in that with um, my walk with the Lord. You know, I, I try my best to do my best for him, but a lot of times I miss the mark in big ways and in small, whether it's a hard thing that's prideful or whether it's a big miss the mark thing. You know, you just gotta keep going forward in those moments. And so that's that's a really a direct parallel I have from farming in the Lord. And that's just, that's just always is so fun. And so that's something I appreciate too. So, but you know, as a farmer, you gotta keep going, keep growing. And if you make a mistake, you just gotta pick up the pieces. And I mean, that honestly goes for pretty much anything in life, whatever your work may be or whatever you do, you know, do all things unto the Lord. <laughs> So here you can see the fungicide after it's been applied. You can see kind of that white milk-like substance on the leaf. Well, I am gonna finish up band spraying our last field of sugar beets for the year today, assuming everything goes right. So thank you for watching and be sure to keep it sweet.